Hello, people of YouTube. Hey, guys. So for those of you who don't know us, who are not following us and are not subscribed to our channel, I'm Nick and this is Sarah. And we're currently travelling around Europe in our camper van with our two little doggies. And in today's video, we wanted to just talk about our flexible solar panels, which we've had on the roof now for six months. We've got a 100 watt solar panel on the roof, a simple MPPT charge controller, and the battery, we've got a 110 amp hour deep cycle lead acid battery. So we just thought we would talk about how we found these flexible solar panels six months in, tell you how we went about attaching it to our roof and how it's been performing over the last six months. And to start with, when looking at a solar panel setup, you've got the choice between flexi and rigid. For our van, he's quite small and he's got a proper curvature to the front. So the only real option and the easiest option was a flexible solar panel. A rigid solar panel would not easily fit on there and it would have meant putting awkward brackets in and drilling holes into the roof as well, which we didn't really want to do. We also didn't really want it to be like a permanent fixture. So if the panel fails, we wanted to be able to remove that and just put another one on. So we came up with the solution of gluing bolts to the roof. The bolts we're talking about are actually chair feet, the bits that screw into the bottom of chair legs. So we chose some of these with the widest surface area and also had a little rubber sort of cup on the end kind of thing. So we roughed that up with a knife and then glued that to the fiberglass roof with CT1 adhesive. After that, we then got the flexible solar panel, popped that on top of the bolts with the holes that are in each corner and in the middle, so six holes all together. This way, that leaves a small gap, an air gap kind of thing, underneath the panel, between the panel and the roof. Then, to stop the wind getting underneath the panel, we use Gorilla Tape all the way around the outside of the panel, and that seemed to do the job, because six months later, the panel hasn't moved. The tape hasn't come off, and we've had no issues whatsoever. We're a little bit worried about these bolts going rusty on the roof, but we just applied a little bit of Vaseline to each bolt and washer and it's been completely fine. We only actually did this once as well and there's been no signs of rust. So although we had a way of attaching the solar panel to the roof without drilling holes, we still had the issue of the cables. We need to get those from the outside of the van to the inside of the van. For this, we're lucky enough or unlucky enough that there was actually a crack and a small hole in the sunroof. So we use this to our advantage, put the cables through that, and that was just perfect. It's great, the crack doesn't cause any leaks, it's not an issue, there's no water coming through there. It's got a double layer there, so that just worked perfectly for our cable issue. Unfortunately, if you don't have a crack in your van, then you will have to think of another way. So like we said, we've been traveling around Europe over the last six months and we've had some very hot temperatures. We've done it over the hottest time of the year. We've parked in the sun a lot of the time because we do want the energy that the solar panel brings in. We've also had some stormy weather. We've had some dust showers. So the solar panel has been put through its paces. It has been properly tested because we have driven under trees because occasionally we do want a bit of shade as it's really hot and they have been you know knocked with branches or scratched with bran branches but there's no marks on them at all also we've only actually been up there and cleaned the panel probably twice i think since it's been up there you know a little bit of bird poop that kind of thing a few dead bugs we've only done that twice so it's really low maintenance so from making our first solar panel installation video a few comments came in about the fact of bending these flexible panels that even though they are flexible apparently they can't be bent too much now we feel that like we've bent ours a fair amount to put it on our curved roof and it's been absolutely fine it wasn't affected at all by that so we had some other comments about these flexible solar panels getting really hot and it could damage the roof or even cause fire um, that is one great thing about that little air gap so yeah that little pocket of air helps to kind of protect the roof. Now we can't comment on if we'd actually just stuck that flat to the roof because we haven't done that, but what we've done has worked perfectly. Yeah, I mean, I kind of feel with these flexible panels, they are 
the purpose of them is to be able to be silliflexed or completely stuck to a flat roof. I feel like that's why they're made in this way. Why else? Yeah. yeah. But again, we don't know because we haven't done it that way. So I'm not sure if that's good or if that's not good. Regarding the performance of the panel, now from what we've researched, the rigid panels are generally going to work better than the flexible. I mean, full sun, sort of peak times of the day, uh, we're getting up to about five amps. And from what we understand, correct us if we're wrong, but your time is the amps by the volts to get the wattage you're receiving. So when it's in full sun, we've the battery's on 14 volts, so your time's in the 14 by the five, which is giving us 70 watts. And from what we've researched, this is about right, because with a 100 watt solar panel, you're always going to lose some through the cables, through the charge controller and all that. So 70 watts is about right, and this hasn't changed. Yeah, that's remained. It's been the constant thing, so it hasn't deteriorated over the last six months, which is great. And even on overcast days, you're still pulling in a little bit, bit of power. So that's great. So even when the weather's bad, you know, you're still charging up the battery slowly. So our final thoughts on the flexible panel after six months. Do we think they are good? Do we think they're worth it? And we would say yes. We would have gone for a rigid one if we could have fit it on our roof. We generally think they are just more robust. They're going to last longer and probably bring in a little bit more power. But if you don't have the option, then and these And you ones, want a really simple setup. Then these flexible ones, in our opinion, are pretty good. Final thing to mention, solar panel on the roof isn't the only one we have. We do have a fantastic little 24 volt fold out panel, which is really, really useful. Yeah, because sometimes we park the van in the shade and just put that little 24 portable panel out in the sun just to charge up any USB devices and it works really, really well. So we thought we'd just mention that as well. And we've actually used this when we've gone off hiking. You can like put it on the back of your bag when you're walking along with the sun behind you. And that's another good option for charging out on the go. Now for this video, everything that we mentioned is linked in the description below, along with the original video we made about our solar setup. So check out the description for all those links. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful if you're thinking about flexible panels and we'll see you in the next video thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the video if you did please give us a thumbs up and hit that like button below if you haven't subscribed to our channel then please do and keep the comments coming because we absolutely love to hear from you and we'll see you in the next video